Hello, I'm Callie Daniels, professor of mathematics at St. Charles Community College and one of the authors of your textbook. I'd like to welcome you to this course and share a few opening thoughts with you that will challenge you to be a great math student. Have you ever looked at a great athlete, accomplished musician, celebrated artist, successful business person or scientist and thought, wow, they are really lucky to have made it to that point in their lives, to have created such a beautiful work of art, to have accomplished such great things. But if you take a closer look, you will notice that it's not luck at all. It is a combination of potential with hard work and choices that have led them to the place that they are today. What does this have to do with you? You are here in college taking a math course, which indicates that you have potential. Now, what do you plan to do with that potential? It's my hope that you will use your potential, combine it with hard work and choices along the way that will help you accomplish great things and that help you become a great math student. Here are my recommendations, my top 10 in fact, for helping you accomplish this. Let's go through these in reverse order. Number 10, take ownership of your education. You have made a choice to be here this semester in this class and now depends on the choices that you make. It is your instructor's job to provide an opportunity for you to learn and it is your job to do the learning. You are the sole owner of your education. Number nine, set goals. Goals direct your behavior. They are the end result of your efforts. Therefore, your goals need to be specific, measurable, and attainable. A few specific goals could be attending each class, completing each assignment completely and on time, identifying your weaknesses, and seeking help promptly. You can take it from here, but seriously, write these goals and each week assess whether you are on track for attaining them. Staying focused on your goals will ensure that you are on the path to success. If you find roadblocks on this path, remove them. If something is preventing you from achieving, then make a change. Remember that you are making the choices now that define who you are and who you will become. Number eight, stay positive. Staying positive will help you keep an open mind and be willing to learn to think in new ways. A positive attitude is something that you can develop. You have an opportunity this semester to learn a subject that can be used to make decisions that will improve your health, your happiness, and your financial future. That's pretty exciting stuff. Stay positive and make the most of it. Number seven, make it real. Focus on learning, not on completing tasks. I'm noticing more and more students in my courses are focusing on completing the task, finishing the assignment, marking one item off their list so that they can quickly move to the next item but they are forgetting that the reason for the assignment, the homework, the task, is to learn the material. Sometimes we get a little too caught up with marking items off our list when we should stop and think about what we are doing and why. So, as you are completing the homework and studying, continually ask yourself what you are learning and how it fits within the objectives of the course and how it is connected to the other material in the course. Number six. Develop a positive relationship with your instructor. It's okay to sit in the front of the classroom, ask good questions, communicate with your instructor. If you are having trouble understanding a concept, your instructor is there to help. Let him or her help you and offer advice and guidance. Number five, learn from your mistakes. Hey, we are all going to make mistakes. Don't beat yourself up over a mistake. Learn from it and use it as an opportunity for growth. Making mistakes gives you the prime opportunity to learn. Number four, look for connections between and among the concepts. Your brain learns new material by connecting it to previous knowledge. The more connections you can make with each new concept, the more likely it is that you will be able to recall that new information when necessary. With each new concept that you learn, try to connect it to a previous math concept a picture, an application, a personal experience, or something funny. Create as many connections for each new concept as possible. Number three, spend quality time doing math every day. The biggest barrier to your learning is time. It takes time to learn new material, especially challenging mathematical concepts. You can only learn by studying, and studying takes time. Let me say that again, you can only learn by studying, and studying takes time. Grab your weekly calendar now and pencil in the times that you will spend studying. 
Start with six to nine hours outside of class per week and evaluate your progress in two weeks. If you need more time, create more time. And go from there, evaluating and making changes as necessary. Number two, use all of the learning tools provided to you. Your textbook and my math lab are the premier learning tools available to mathematics students in the history of learning mathematics. Your state-of-the-art textbook is written especially with you in mind. It features examples with step-by-step -step solutions, figures and photos to pique your interest, now try exercises that give you an opportunity to test your knowledge, and real-life exercises to help you connect with the mathematics. Learn to read your textbook. Reading a math textbook is a slow process. Take your time. Read, write, reflect, and think about what you are learning. When you get stuck, refer to the video library that my math lab offers. Watch a video of an expert instructor presenting examples in a step-by-step -step fashion. You also have access to the solutions manual and many help features within the homework assignments. My math lab is truly like having your own personal tutor 24-7. Make the most of it. And lastly, number one, be good at math. If you want to give yourself the competitive edge in the job market, be good at math. If you want to work in a career field that creates, advertises, researches, plans, be good at math. If you want to be a wise consumer or learn to make decisions that improve your health, your happiness, and your financial future, be good at math. And then, when you find that you're good at math, help others be good at math. There you have it. I hope that you can grab hold of at least a few of these recommendations and make them your own. I wish you the best of luck in this course. No, not the best of luck. It's my sincere hope that you will use your potential, combine it with hard work, stay positive and focused, that you will make it real and own it, learn from your mistakes, and be a great math student this semester. My best to you.